Uh, this is Matthew Wong, and I have a quick video here to show you something uh, for anyone who uses Ableton Live for film scoring. So this is a very kind of, I guess, normal looking Ableton session. Uh, we just got a lot of, you know, string stuff at the top, a uh, piano track, a synth thing. Uh, I'll play it real quick and I'll show you some of the issues. So this is my uh, tempo track, just so you can see it at the bottom and you can look up here at the top too. But let me just press play and I'll have a click going too. Cool. Nothing too uh, extraordinary music-wise, but uh, I just want to show you something about the quirks of trying to get something like this into a setting for get. We're basically getting it into another DAW for prepping for a recording session. So let's say I need to get this, uh, you know, all this MIDI over to an orchestrator so that we can get sheet music made. Uh, well, first off, none of these MIDI parts are named. That's on me. I'll take the blame. Uh, but the bigger issue in Ableton is we're going to have a lot of difficulty getting this tempo map out uh, over here. So what I did is I made a click track. Uh, it is a drum rack with an array click sample, and it's triggering every single quarter note with these tempo changes. And then what we're going to do, because you can't export tempo maps or meter changes out of Ableton currently, uh, is I'm going to start by actually bouncing my full mix with this array click sound, um, so I'm not actually separating the click. It's all combined in one audio file, which is a bit weird, but we'll, we'll talk about it in a sec. Uh, Ableton Tempo export test live. Uh, I'll right click in there as well. Um, next, uh, we're going to have to make this tempo map, but we're also going to have to export each of these MIDI clips for the orchestrator or for whoever is working on my team. So I'd have to go through and make sure each MIDI clip is the same length. And I mean, that's pretty easy in Ableton. I can just do that. Command J, Command J, Command J, voila. And then I have to probably rename all of these clips. Um, but then the bigger issue is I can't export them all at once. I have to go here, export MIDI clips. So I'd have to hit Command Shift E and export each one, name each one. Um, and there's a couple of bit of workarounds. I mean, one is if I call this like violin one legato, and then I call the next clip violin two legato. Um, you could make like a user library folder and I could actually just drag these over into the user library and grab them from the desktop, which might save a little bit of time. But I want to show you another even better trick, which is, uh, let me just save this real quick over here. Uh, live 12, boom. And I'm actually going to go and try out a different DAW, uh, very out there approach. So we're going to go to Bitwig. Uh, studio, which I think I should have open, but maybe I closed it. Aha, I closed it. Uh, we can probably speed this part up in editing, but it's actually loading pretty quick. Uh, and I've got a trial of Bitwig. Woo! So now what I'm going to do is open file, go to my folder with the Ableton project, hit open. And the cool thing with the Bitwig is you can actually open an Ableton project right in Bitwig. Whoa, and look at that. It even names all of our, well, it names every track based off the track name in Ableton, which is awesome. Uh, and the big thing is I can go select all of these MIDI clips and I can put it over here and I can call it uh, Bitwig Export. Um, so now I'm just going to go in Logic to kind of show how all this stuff would work on the other end. So... Now, as someone who has to import all this stuff, it's great. All I need to do is grab this able to tempo export test. Uh, and what happens if I grab the MIDI right from Bitwig is if I do this and I try to import tempo info, unfortunately, Bitwig doesn't actually seem to export tempo information yet. A uh, bit of a bummer, but it's okay. Um, so all of this stuff is great. It says tempo 110 because that's the tempo that this session starts at but it's not getting all of our tempo info down here 
So let's uh, not import the MIDI. Let's undo. And then I'm just going to go here and hit apply region tempo to project tempo in logic and uh, align downbeat to nearest project downbeat and hit apply. And look at that. It just uh, basically, yeah, tempo mapped the whole thing in one click. So now if I press play, and with the logic clicks we can hear, So pretty quick, and uh, I mean, as you can probably hear, it's not exactly perfect, but it's so close that it's pretty great, and it's definitely a lot faster than any other kind of workflow I've seen uh, for getting stuff out of Ableton ready for an orchestration kind of pass. And now if we grab our MIDI from Bitwig, we have every single track. I'm not going to import Tempo Info because it's a bit of a nightmare. Uh, and we have all of our MIDI for all of our parts, and they're all kind of labeled. Um, and there, I might just do a little MIDI cleanup. I don't know why the click is over there. A bit weird. Um, and then we're actually in a pretty good spot if we export our MIDI tracks as a MIDI file. Uh, or better yet, actually, let's not even do that. I mean, we can, you know, you can import into Finale, Dorco, whatever you want. But if I just hit Command-5 and we take a look, um, our MIDI is in, uh, in a pretty good place. Definitely some weirdness here with the viola part. Um, but that's just a logic quirk with the sheet music thing. Uh, so I hope this uh, tip helps in terms of using Bitwig and uh, I guess the logic follow tempo slash this thing where you just hit apply region tempo to project tempo um, as a quick tip to try to get your sessions ready for recording. Uh, with that, I hope you have a great day and let me know in the comments or whatever if you have any other kind of Ableton questions. And yeah, talk soon.